That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Blackbird, the latest film directed by Roger Michel, which will be available on digital on demand as of September 18th, 2020. It premiered at the 2019 Toronto International Film Festival, so basically a year ago from right now. Um, it is a remake of Bill August's uh, 2014 Danish film Silent Heart. You saw that film? Yes. What did you think about that? I didn't like that film much. Uh, I had less problems with it than I do with this film. So we watched it last night mm -hmm. and I spent like 30 minutes com afterwards complaining about it. Mm -hmm. Sure did. <laughs> so this will be interesting. The basic story is a woman who appears to be in her 70s, played by Susan Sarandon. Mm -hmm. Lily. Has a terminal condition. Uh, I think it's supposed to be ALS. In this that makes film. sense because they talk about how she will... So one of her arms and legs is not quite fully operational. Mm -hmm. And then her husband, who's a physician, says that we don't know. In a, in a week, two weeks, she could end up not being able to swallow or breathe on her own. So that makes sense. But the basic story is she has decided that she is going to commit suicide mm -hmm. before she gets too sick. Mm -hmm. So she has set a date. She has already talked to all of her family members. They mm -hmm. all agree. And uh, they come over for the weekend to spend a, the last couple of days with her before she does it. She does it. The end. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. There you go. Yeah. That was quick. Good. Mm -hmm. What would you like to say about this movie? <sighs> Okay, so, oh God, where do we start? So it, it was written by, um, but, but Roger Michel is a filmmaker that I do quite like. Uh, he's uh, been around for years. He directed uh, a remake of My Cousin Rachel recently with Rachel Weisz based on the Daphne du Maurier novel that originally starred Olivia de Havilland, rest in peace. Uh, he did The Weeknd with uh, Jim Broadbent and Lindsay Duncan, who appears in this film as Liz, the friend. Oh, yes. Um, who's an actress I like a lot. Uh, and he did Notting Hill, which I'm not a fan of. He, he's been all over the place. And uh, Bill August isn't so much a filmmaker I like either, so it's not that Silent Heart is a film that I cherish either, but the dynamics of it works a little better. It was written by Christian Torp, uh, who rewrites the screenplay for an American version, and it's basically beat by beat except for a few distinct differences, the biggest being uh, the younger daughter, here played by Mia Wasikowska, is a lesbian, which she was not in the first film. Um, the title I have a problem with, especially. Uh, Blackbird... Uh, I have to say, have you heard of the Black Eagle? <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, do you consider yourself someone that'll, that fucks with birds? Man of Steel. Uh, <laughs> you uh, mean like loose women? Like, no, or do birds. you mean like the ones with wings and shit? <laughs> what are we talking about now? Um, so th there's a passing reference to Nina Simone because Susan Tarantino has this collection record that we never see. Um, so it has to be that this remake is uh, an homage to Nina Simone, which I find kind of... Um, off the mark. Off the mark, doesn't fit. That's a haunting, eerie song. It's not used here. And, and that is a song, like Gina Prince Bythewood's Beyond the Lights, that was supposed to be called Blackbird. She didn't even use that film for the title. It was also that Patrick Ian Pope film, which was Monique's comeback as the mother of the gay kid. Oh, yeah. I don't know, to, to me, the, and to not even utilize the song is strange, because it has to be a reference to her. Um, well, let's break down the characters really quickly. Sure. So... Susan Sarandon's Lily. Yes. Her husband is played by Sam Neill. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm impressed I knew that. Um, oh, let's talk about the older daughter. <laughs> let, let me go down my notes because it was at the 43 minute mark mm -hmm. that I realized that the oldest daughter is Kate Winslet. Yeah, he turns because to Because you know... <laughs> he turns to me, he's like, that woman looks a lot like Kate Winslet. Because it is. It is Kate Winslet. Because you know who I thought she was? Because her character is like the most bland... Or like brunette wig with a camisole and glass, like just the most bland lady. Mm -hmm. I thought she was the woman who played Ed Helms' wife in The Hangover. Oh, no, she's that's a very funny lady. Uh, that lady's funny, name. yes, but uh, she plays sort of that uptight. I thought and, Kate was designed a lot to look like the character she played in the Steve Jobs movie with Michael Fassbender with the glasses and the brunette. Sure, anyhow. So, Sam Neill's the husband. Mm -hmm. 
She has two daughters. Mm -hmm. One is Kate Winslet. She's the older one. She's very uptight. Um, she's married to Rain Wilson, who's like Rain Wilson. Mm -hmm. They have a teenage son. Lily's other daughter is played by what? Mia Wasikowska. And she's a lesbian. She brings her girlfriend with her. And then Judith. Lily, Judith? Who's the older lady? The blonde. Oh, Liz. Lindsay Duncan. Liz. Lindsay Duncan plays Lily's best friend. Mm -hmm. So those are the players. They've all been told that Lily's committing suicide. They've all sort of like agreed that it's the right thing to do. And they're there just to spend their final moments with her. Mm -hmm. So she wants, Lily wants it to be very chill. Just like a normal weekend. Um, she does kind of surprise her husband by saying, I want to celebrate Christmas. So they have a Christmas dinner the first night. Mm -hmm. And that's like halfway through the movie that they sit down for dinner. But up until that point, we sort of established that th the younger daughter is, like, troubled. Mm -hmm. Because she kind of gets into to an argument with her sister, Kate Winslet's character, about how she's never around when they need her to be present. Um, and at the dinner scene, Lily goes around the table and gives everyone a gift. Mm -hmm. Something she thinks might be meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. Which are just like these trinkets, an old ring, an old bracelet. Her L Lily gives her wedding ring to Kate Winslet's character. Um, and then she starts saying, like, I'm so proud of my daughters. They turned out to be such wonderful young women. And then Mia's character says, like, the fuck are you talking about? You don't even know us. Like, and then it devolves from there. They kind of have a heart-to-heart, -heart, Mia's character and Lily... Her issue is that she doesn't know her mom and her mom doesn't know her and she feels like she needs more time. So she's sort of backtracking on the idea of supporting her mom's suicide and she confides in her girlfriend that she's going to call 911 mm -hmm. the morning that her mom's doing it to, you know, report like an attempted suicide. So, oh, and, and that's the other major difference from the original because the elder daughter does call 911 in that Oh, at that part of the okay, interesting. And then what do they do? That yeah. That well, here let's explain this. So then, the film takes a turn because after they've sort of Kate Winslet's character and Mia's character, the two sisters sort of get into an argument about like you're not going to ruin mom's like decision. But in that night, that night, Kate Winslet's character sees her dad kissing Lily's friend. Mm -hmm. Liz, mm -hmm. and she is so upset. Yes, but prior stays to that, up, stays up the whole day in the garage or the shed, looking at old photographs and recounting to Rain Wilson that you know what Liz has been around all the time and all Liz, the family. Okay, trips. so I'm not a traditional conservative person. You know, like relation. Yeah, I don't sort of abide to like traditional definitions of relationships. So maybe my perspective is a little more open mm -hmm. to what I presume was going to happen, but. Prior to Kate Winslet's character seeing that, we already hear Lily talk to her friend Liz about how they sort of had like some lesbian stuff going on. And then Lily really presents herself as sort of like a progressive person because she talks to the grandson mm -hmm. about like, you know, now's your chance to tell me things that I wouldn't have found out until you get older. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just confide in me because I'm going to die anyway and I'm not going to tell anyone. So she's like, are you gay? Are you trans? Do you do drugs? Blah, blah, blah. So when we see... Liz kissing Sam Neill's character Santa, and then Santa Claus <laughs> and then we see Kate Winslet's character looking through old photos explaining to Rain Wilson's character like all our lives Liz has been around every family vacation I'm like yeah stupid because probably the three of them were fucking around mm -hmm. hello yeah and this is a grown ass woman yeah like a grown like in her 40s with a teenage kid like she obviously had sex at least once like she can't be that like blind but she blows up. Mm -hmm. Which is... I had this problem with the original, too. This this juncture. She's played by Paprika Steen in the original. Who is... is Fits a little more well. And that character seems more developed in that. But I also found that false. The, the looking through the albums and having this epiphany. And then... It, it does not play well, I think, when Kate Winslet and Rain Wilson have their... Have a spat over it and then have sex. Which... They... It, it just... It just feels treacly. <laughs> Well, and like, yeah, two unsexy people 
being sexual out of nowhere. I like Kate. No, I'm, I'm not sexy. saying she's not sexy, but those characters are just so... Yes. She's the epitome of, like, just, like, an uptight, bland-ass lady. What, what did you say? Like, it feel, the screenplay feels like you went to a warehouse to stock characters. And <laughs> this movie feels like if you were writing a screen... Like, there, like, if there were a website where you could write a screenplay and you just pay for, like, stock characters and stock, stock storylines, mm -hmm. and they just picked and mm -hmm. put it all together. Um, she... So, the more... The, the next day, Kate Winslet kind of, like, confronts the group and says, like, I need to say something. Mm -hmm. I found out something. Dad is cheating on mom with Liz. Mm -hmm. And then L Lily says, well, yeah, like, what's so weird about that? Like, don't you think I want my best friend and my husband to have love? And if they didn't have that, do you think that I could do this? Yeah, like this creates the space for me to do this. Shit. And you know, in all it like like being practical, sure, but that shit like does not sound right in that at that moment. Like, oh my god, the writing is so out of control for me. So much so that I like I've never written down so many like lines from mm -hmm. a movie that I just thought were so corny. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say a few? Well, first of all, I'm just gonna go down this because we need to wrap this up. When Kate Winslet's character shows up to, um, like, her mom's house to start the weekend, she brings her a gift, mm -hmm. which I thought was weird. Like, I don't bring my mom gifts when I see her. <laughs> but anyway, brings her a gift, and it's like salt and pepper shakers. Yes. What, what was the purpose? <sighs> I don't know. Well, I, I think that sets up the whole problem. Because we spent a lot of time, not to interrupt you, but yeah. about... Uh, all the things, how this could have been an interesting scenario yes. and what a missed opportunity it is. Uh, and one of them was why, why can't this woman have gathered her family under erroneous circumstances and then done it like to put everybody through this stress. And then you have these things it, on paper. This sounds like a very interesting plot device, but then it, it, it dies. It's a deal. Well, I think what you just said is I think would have been the optimal approach to this story is like have, Lily's character invite her like loved ones her closest family members to spend a lovely weekend with her under some false pretense and then at the end of the weekend when everyone's gone then she kills herself mm -hmm. but to mar it with like also I mean anyway keep going with your quotes the first line she says so because um Lily is like having a glass of uh Chablis and she drops it in a very dramatic scene because the audio is very loud and we hear this glass shatter and she says, you know, it's time to kill yourself when you have to start drinking your Chablis from a paper cup. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, this movie, is it marketed as a comedy? Uh, it, the trailer. Because it's not funny. Like it. It's not. And it's not dramatic. And, but it could have been. <laughs> it's not it dark. Could, it could have been. It should have been. Um, in, in the original, it's cognac in that scene. And the, the mother says. Dark liquor would be more appropriate. But anyway, go the, ahead. And the mother says, I refuse to drink cognac out of a straw. That's sure. a better line. Yeah, it, it, it just, this worked better. You had a funny comment halfway through. You said, because Susan Sarandon is dying of cancer in that 1998 film. Oh, and Stepmom. Stepmom, yeah. and you said she's been a dying mom since 1998. <laughs> and I don't think Stepmom is a good film by any means, but I, I dare I say better than that. You know what it also reminded me of? There's a really great scene that's disturbing in a black comedy called Igby Goes Down from 2002, where she plays... Kieran Culkin's mother, and she commits suicide in front of him by like downing a bottle of pills. Oh god! It's very, but it's very like that. That is the tone I would have wanted with this. The ne the next morning after their first night, um, Lily is trying to get like some family members downstairs, and she yells, um, "You up yet? I'm dead soon." Wait, Again, th but this doesn't play as a comedy to me. Right, but it's like if that tone could have been used more perversely yeah. throughout, then this would ostensibly have worked better the grandson um because she wants to lily wants to talk to the grandson while he's decorating the christmas tree mm -hmm. and she's asking him questions and the grandson says are you going to give me some super important life advice now and it was just so stiff uh, like yeah it's what are we doing right now um that reminded she, me of a, a scene in life is a house when hayden christensen screams at kevin klein do you expect me to love you now
about that. Then she tells him when she's trying to get, when Lily's trying to get her grandson to like confide in her, she says like, I will take your secret to my grave. It's just like, we get it. But then she says it at the dinner table. You're gonna like kill yourself. Like, we get it. Do you have something in there about his little rap at the table? That's my next one. Okay. <laughs> oh, Let me tell you something. So at the dinner scene, they're trying to hype up the grandson like, be because the one secret he does share with Lily is that he wants to be an actor. And because... I mean, my very first uh, note from this movie when it started was like, oh, rich white people <laughs> for so many reasons. More on that but, in a bit. Yeah. But also because clear, like, you know, the dad's a uh, physician. It's not explained what Lily did, but seemingly she was successful in whatever she did. They all seem to have done well. For, well, not really, because the lesbian daughter is a fuck up. But um, it, the impression is made that the grandson wanting to be an actor will not be well received. So at the dinner... Lily says it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Kate Winslet's character is upset about it, but then they talk it through and then they convince him to like recite a poem mm -hmm. or like a song that he wrote, and it's a rap. No, he wrote it for the occasion, I thought. Oh, yeah, he just wrote it. But so he shared that he just wrote this thing but doesn't want to recite it, but then he does, and it's a rap, and it is <sighs> like cringe worthy, but not funny. It's just it's like, who wrote this? <laughs> it's very white. Um... <laughs> um they get stoned at the dinner table and it's just like it just i don't know i know that there are families like this and i can't relate to it so i'm not gonna say it's like so unrealistic it's just so goddamn corny like it is very corny oh my god like kate Winslet's character like they pass around a joint after much like you know uh sort of derision from her and the grandson saying, I've already done this. But, and, and Lily saying stuff like, you should never smoke weed unless it's at your grandma's death or when you're having sex. Like, she's trying to be crass and cool. Again, not funny. It just doesn't work. But they pass around the joint and, like, Kate Winslet's character takes, like, the tiniest little puff. And she's like, I can feel it. And, but, like, being sincere. Mm -hmm. Like, this is so fake. Um, why do I have She Dies Tomorrow written down? Oh, that would have been a better title. Because I said that's the title should have been. <laughs> that would have been a better title <laughs> for a movie that Walsh, because She Dies Tomorrow is not a good movie. but Oh, but getting back to it, Paprika scene in the original does call 911, the older daughter. And Yes, so what, what happens? What they do is the confrontation about the, the mother's friend is all is revealed. And then um, the daughter, the older, Jennifer here, the older daughter is... Uh, apologetic for it and they decide that the ambulance is coming so they're gonna lie and say the younger sister to, to, tried to overdose oh so they so, they, of, so she well that would have added some added sort something of tension to it. um I, a, a good point that you brought up that we talked at length about last night was um the fact that it's brought up Sam Neill tells the grandson, yes, it's illegal here. Uh, yes. Euthanasia is illegal here, but, you know, in Europe and some places, obviously. Or in some states, Like it's D.C. Uh, but your mother, this is the house that she lived in and wants to die here. Two things. All, you can go to the second point, but I think that there is nothing that says... It looks like an Ikea, a beautiful Ikea-decorated house, really. Like, it, it's, it reeks of wealth, but there's nothing... Um, interesting like if I, if I was dying and going to do this I would be surrounded it, it would be clear why I would want to die in this space and it's, it's just not there's nothing remarkable, remarkable I had a funny story because we went to go look at houses in Vegas like a month ago and I found this really beautiful home it's like new construction so it's like the row of model homes and we go to look at these homes and they're gorgeous but we found like I didn't do my research well enough they were for 55 plus but the, the my thought was those model homes we saw had more personality. Mm -hmm. Model homes for like a 55 plus community yeah. <laughs> with books glued down and posters of random people up on the wall felt more like a home than the home in this movie. So yeah, like you said, she wants, first of all, potentially put her husband at like risk of criminal charges for killing his wife or at least losing his medical license. Yeah. Because she wants to die in this bland ass house. Well, it makes no sense. And also me. you brought up that it's a, like a dateline recipe. <laughs> like, oh, this... like the wife overdosed. Uh, are we not going to question the husband? These are wealthy people. What's the inheritance like? The, what what does he seek to gain? From, you know, those are questions that will be asked. That this... this feels like a dateline, like a more interesting dateline um, episode would follow this movie because <laughs> I have three more notes. Uh, 
I think this storyline would have seemed revolutionary like 30 years ago. Yeah. But in 2020, it's like, okay, we, you know, this is obviously not an issue that we're all aligned on because it's not legal in the United States uh, on a federal level. But the way she's acting and then sort of like this relationship she has with her best friend and then her husband sort of like moving on with her, it doesn't feel, it feels dated. It feels like something that I would have watched if I were an adult in 1990, thinking like, oh, this is provocative. Mm -hmm. But right now it just seems like, th this just seems really like unnecessary. Well, it's like if, we, if you're going to stick, rewrite this material and still stick with this like upper crust white family, tease out the interesting elements that are lurking in there, like that scenario, for instance. But I would have liked to see this rewritten by somebody in a different family, a different community, tease out different... Uh, diversities, class, and race Literally issues. anything it, right, would have been better. Right. Would have been better. I felt nothing. I didn't think it was funny when the daughter, when the youngest daughter confronts her mom, like, and confronts her sister, like, I don't know mom. You don't know me. You're choosing to die tomorrow or the day after. And, like, I haven't, like, we, even if you can save two weeks for me, like, I felt nothing. Well, that's literally I'm nothing. not, I'm not, Unable to feel things. I, I can feel empathy in watching very contrived films, like The Family Stone, for instance. But, but yeah, there's really... I couldn't generate, muster any feelings for any of these characters. The only time I think I laughed was at the very end, at the thought. It's not presented in the film, but we were laughing at the thought of, like, so they all leave that mo Monday morning... And then she kills herself. So I was laughing like, oh, so do we all have to come back for the that's, funeral? Yeah, like... <laughs> that's the only laugh. Don't go too far. Yeah, like, are you making everyone drive all the way home so then come back for the funeral? But it's like, it, like the, the tone of that could have been so good if those were the things being said. Like, well, I guess I'll just go to town and get a hotel. <laughs> I don't have anything else, and this video is probably too long. What would you give the movie? Uh, one and a half out of five. And... It, do, it does have a spectacular cast. It's just... I would give it one and a half, and I'm only giving it one and a half because um, the, the cast is pretty... And, you know, Susan Sarandon... I like Susan Sarandon. And she does kind of... She's kind of playing the same thing in every movie I've seen her in. Like, the, well, she's played a dying mother many times, but... Uh, but, but just like a sassy older woman who looks great. Yeah, of course, but uh, looks phenomenal, but just... And, and, I don't know, it's just... But you can't blame them. Like Kate Winslet, I found very disappointing in this. But again, I don't think it's her fault. They were they were directed this. They were drawn this way. Um, yeah. Anything else? No. All right. Bye. bye.